And I'm going to start off today asking you to do a brief exercise. I'm going to ask you to take this list of strings that I have here and put them in an array list. And then I want you to use some technique that we learned earlier in the year to remove the duplicates and then take the revised array list with the duplicates removed and print it again. And I'll tell you also that we don't care about the order in which the output occurs. That doesn't matter for this exercise. And the reason I want you to do this is we're going to need this trick later today when we're uh, working with our permutations and combinations. And so just as a review, I want to see if you remember how to remove duplicates from a list. Okay, so I have here an array list of the words that I showed earlier. I've added all the words to my array list and I've printed the array list. Let's just run this one time to make sure everything is okay. And here I have this original array list which has all the duplicates in it. And now the assignment is to somehow, without using some complicated nested loop, to try to remove the duplicates. And I'm going to call for a volunteer from the audience. Okay, Mr. Basu, sir. What do I do? First, can you just describe using English sentences your general strategy for removing the duplicates? Put in a set. Okay, sir, go ahead and tell me how you did that. And you notice that I can use this as a seed to create my hash set so the list is used automatically. Now, instead of doing this, you can start off the hash set as empty and then add each element one at a time, but that's not really necessary. So this is a much faster way of doing it where you just use the list to start off the hash set. So now I have to do some importing here. And what do I put here, sir? And once again, I can use the set as a seed to start off my array list. And now, of course, I can print the answer afterwards. Let's run this now to see if we've succeeded in uh, eliminating all the duplicates. And you can see here, this is the original list with the duplicates, and here is the unique list without the duplicates. So that was an efficient way of removing the duplicates. Now, you notice that the order of printing is not guaranteed. So here, for example, hat was the first one, but here hat's been moved over here. If I wanted the final list to be alphabetized, uh, what would be two ways that I could do that? Okay, Mr. Uh, Alejandro, sir, can you tell me one way I could have the final list be alphabetized? Let's do that. So we're going to do collections.sort, and let's run this one, make sure it works. And this time you can see that the output came out as alphabetized. What's another way I can do it without using the sort command? Anybody know? I think a tree set will work. Let's try that. And you can see that that tree set also works for alphabetizing. Okay, we're going to draw the solution tree for permuting these three letters. For the C, we have two other potential outcomes. For the A, we have two outcomes. And for the T, we have two outcomes. So for the C, so this is going to be C-A-T, C-T-A, A-C-T, A-T-C. TCA and TAC. Did I get them all? I think so. So once again, by counting how many leaf nodes there are, we can tell how many solutions there are going to be in the final solution here. So this is how we would permute a string. And if you were to use that algorithm that I just showed you a few seconds ago, if you were to use this algorithm, you could get the exact same answers that I just did manually. But as I mentioned to you, understanding how this recursion works is difficult for high school students. So I'm going to show you a really cool algorithm that I stumbled across uh, on the internet, which I've never seen anywhere else. And it's much, much simpler for you. And I think it's one that you'll probably be able to remember. So let's look at that for a second. So let's say I want to take this word cat and I want to generate all the possible permutations of the letters. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to use a stack. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the letters and I'm going to add a character that I'm guaranteed is not going to be in my uh, list of characters that are in my data. I'm just going to use a pipe character like this. Now this pipe character is just one choice. You can use a dollar sign or some other things. Some people like to use asterisks. Asterisks are dangerous to use because 
if you have a regular expression, an asterisk is a wild card, and so maybe kind of avoid that. But I like the pipe character. The pipe character is the character that's sitting right above your return key on your keyboard. If you hit the shift and there's the, 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 the square above the return key, that's the pipe character. In Java, the pipe character is used to form an OR expression. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add the pipe character to the end of my string here, and I'm going to push that into the stack. So I'm going to add this string right here to the stack like that. And now I'm going to start a loop. I'm going to start a looping process. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull out one item from the stack, and I'm going to ask myself, number one, is the, is the pipe character to the far left of the string? Here you can see it's not. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pop this out. So now I have it out here. So I can process it, right? And I'm going to delete it from the, the stack because I popped it, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some stuff back in the stack. And I'm going to take each of these letters one at a time. And I'm going to move it to the end of the string. So here, I've got three things I'm going to generate. The first one is going to be A, T, then the pipe, and then the C, like that. See, I took the C and I pushed it to the end of the string. And I'm going to put this into the stack right here. So I'm going to go A, T, pipe, C. Now, the next one I'm going to move is the A. I'm going to move the A over to the end of the string. So I'm going to get, end up with this string right here, C, T, pipe, A. I'm going to put that in there, C, T, pipe, A. And then one more in my internal loop. I'm going to move the T over, right? So I'm going to end up with C, A, pipe, T. And I'm going to put that in the stack. Now I'm going to erase all this. And I'm going to continue with my loop. And I'm going to take the top element, and I'm going to pop it off the stack. So I'm going to delete it here. And I'm going to process it right here. And I'm going to ask the question, is the pipe character to the far left of my string? It's not. If it were, what I would do is I would remove the pipe character and put this in my solution set. But it's not on the far left, so I'm going to keep processing. So I'm going to take this, and I'm going to take each character that's to the left of the pipe and move it to the end of the string and add it to my stack. So the first one I'm going to move over is the C. So it's going to be like this. And the second one I'm going to move over is the A. So it's going to be like this. And I'm going to put these into the stack. So I'm going to put A, T, C into the stack, and C, oops, C, T, A into the stack. And I'm going to erase all this. And once again, I'm going to come up to the top, and I'm going to pull off the top one here, C pipe T A. And I'm going to say, is this pipe all the way to the far left? And it's not. So I'm going to take the C, and I'm going to move it to the end. And I'm going to push this back onto the stack. And I'm going to take the top element off the stack again. And I'm going to ask, is the pipe on the far left? And this time it is. So I'm going to delete the pipe. And I'm going to add this string to my solution set. Now, when I'm all done, the solution set will contain the permuted list of all of my permutations. Now, I have to give you one word of warning here. And that is, what happens if there are repeated letters? So I have to go over that example. And then I'm going to show you this entire algorithm in print. And I'm going to ask you to code it as our finishing exercise for the day. Let's go back to our little example here of cat. And let's remember that we have six solutions here, right? And the way we got to six was we said it's going to be three factorial. This is permutations now, right? And it's going to be three factorial. Uh, so this is going to be um, uh, three choose three, right? Three choose three. So it's going to be 3 factorial over 3 minus uh, 3 factorial, right? And so this is going to be 6 over 1. Remember, 0 factorial is 1, right? So we're going to have 6 solutions like that. Now, let's look at a slightly more difficult example. Let's look at this word here and ask ourselves, 
If we were going to arrange this one uh, in uh, different permutations, how many different permutations are there? Now, normally, we would just use the formula here and calculate 1, 2, 3, we'd go 5 factorial. Is this going to have 5 factorial solutions? No, why not? Mr. Franovic? There's a repeated L. So when we have repeated letters, we have to modify the formula slightly. And let me just show you what that formula is. It's going to be n factorial over p factorial, q factorial, r factorial, and any other letter combinations that there are. So for this one, for example, the total number of letters is 5. So it's going to be 5 factorial. And here, we just take the frequency of each letter. So there's one h, so that's 1 factorial. There's one e, that's 1 factorial. There are two l's, so that's 2 factorial. And then there's one o, so that's 1 factorial. So here, it's the top is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And down here, the only thing that matters is the 2. And so now these 2's will cancel. And so now what we have left is 5 times 4 is 20 times 3 is 60. So there are going to be 60 different answers for this one. Now, when we go back to our algorithm that I showed you before with the pipe character, it's not going to generate 60. It's going to generate all 120. But what's going to be true about the solution set in that case? There'll be somewhat in the, in the solution set. There'll be duplicates. So how are we going to get back down to 60? Put it in a set and do the trick that we did earlier in the day. So I'm going to show you now an English version of that algorithm that I just showed you earlier. Here is the algorithm. And this is here just to help you. It's pseudocode for you. And I would like you to try and write out this algorithm and put in the words cat and hello and see if you can generate all the answers. Okay? Do me a favor and print out the answers with a, in an, uh, with, with in, in numbered list so you'll know how many answers you got. Okay, with cat, it'll be easy to count, but with, uh, with hello, you know, there's 60 answers, so you're going to number the list. Okay?